Vivo finally seems to have realized what it had been doing wrong all this time. So the outcome is well the Vivo Z1 Pro and the Vivo S1. I have recently reviewed the Vivo Z1 Pro and if you haven't watched the review already, you can find it from somewhere here. So today I have the Vivo S1 which is slightly pricier than the Vivo Z1 Pro. Also while the Vivo Z1 Pro was only available in India via Flipkart, the Vivo S1 is available in many different countries in their offline channels. And looking at the specs, the Vivo S1 does look impressive. But is it any better than the much cheaper Vivo Z1 Pro? And if it is any better, is it worth paying the extra premium for the Vivo S1? Let's find out. Okay, first thing, let's get done with the display. It does not have a punch hole display like the Vivo Z1 Pro, but the notch here is so tiny, it is barely obtrusive. The bezels too are very less, overall the display looks clean. It's a 6.3 inches Super AMOLED screen, so you can imagine how it is. The colors on it look vibrant and the blacks look dark, making for a very good display experience. And side by side with the IPS panel of the Vivo Z1 Pro, the display on it is far better. And this AMOLED screen is housed for an in-display fingerprint sensor too, which unlocks fast but don't expect anything of the OnePlus 7 Pro kind. The sensor, I would say, is fairly accurate, but I have had instances where it has not read my fingerprint altogether. But that has only happened a few times, so no worries. You also get a dark mode that helps save your battery and protect your eyes, so that's a handy feature to have. You have different modes from where you can choose the screen color and make it bright or slightly warmer and such. It's totally up to your preference. The display indoors is bright, obviously, but even outdoors, it's moderately bright. There's an always-on display feature too, which makes sense on this AMOLED panel. Apart from your usual date, time and battery percentage, you can get a messenger badge if you get messages and such as well. So overall, I've liked the display experience on this one, but when you move to the bag, things don't look that good. It's got a plastic bag and the sides are plastic too. So durability could be a concern in the long run. But the design is nothing to complain. It's appealing, feels good on hold, and will not disappoint you. However, smudges are something that are inevitable and I am not someone who likes casing up their phones, so I've had a tough time. But usually, people case their phone up, so it should not be a huge problem for most. More about the design, you have these diamond-shaped patterns at the back which look very unique and I think will appeal to most people. The vertical camera array at the back has this golden lining surrounding it which kind of makes the camera stand out in the overall design. And just like the Z1 Pro, you also get the power and volume buttons on the right and an AI button on the left. It can be used to trigger Google Assistant or Google Search, whatever you so prefer. On pressing it twice, however, you can trigger either Google Search, Google Assistant or Image Recognizer. While I don't use it all that much, it can come handy sometimes. Although I wish the buttons could be more tactile. It's plastic and you will know it right away. Down below you get the same old micro USB like in most Vivo smartphones, a single firing bottom speaker and a headphone jack. The output from the headphone jack and the mono speaker is well nothing to write home about. It's pretty average just like what you get on other mid-range phones. So overall, the build is plastic, but I think the design is good enough. It looks good, so I'm okay with it. In terms of performance, the Vivo S1 has the new MediaTek Helio P65 chipset. It does offer improvements in the CPU performance compared to last-gen Helio P60 and P70, but strangely, the GPU performance has been downgraded. This one uses the Mali G52 GPU, while the P60 and P70 uses a much powerful Mali G72. Strangely, the chipset does not support UFS storage, but has Bluetooth 5.0 support. And as a matter of fact, we know we get phones with Snapdragon 712 and Snapdragon 675 in this price range, whose performance is well better than the Helio P65. But enough of the technicalities, the real-life performance has been good, I must say. Regular day-to-day -day tasks run like they should. I have never faced a single problem in my everyday usage. It has taken up the most intensive of the tasks very well, so I will not complain. PUBG runs in HD in high settings with some stutters here and there. But I preferred medium settings as it gave me smoother performance. While we're talking about PUBG, Vivo seems to be really focused on giving their users the best experience. 
If you have watched my Zep1 Pro review, I had mentioned that there are several features like being able to reply to text on screen while playing games, being able to run the game in the background while it loads and reminding you with a timer. The phone also has this exercise where it trains you with the help of sounds so that you can better locate your enemy. Some of these features are PUBG exclusive, while some are for other games too. But again, if the choice of the chipset would have been better, I would have loved the device even more. Take gaming for example. Not that there is a problem while playing PUBG or other high-end games, but it would have run smoother with Snapdragon 712 or 675. The phone comes with Android 9 Pie with its own FontTouch OS 9 on top. I used the Vivo Z1 Pro before this and if you have watched a review of it, you would know how not so fun FontTouch OS is for me. But if you are a Vivo user, you should have no difficulty using it. It has this upward swiping toggle menu which I had the most difficulty getting used to initially. Also, the arrangement of things in the UI could have been implemented better. Since the display is AMOLED, I have applied this dark mode which has made the entire theme dark which looks good normally but it's kind of weird on WhatsApp and Instagram. Talking about the software-based facial unlock, it's fast like all Vivo phones. And since the in-display fingerprint sensor is also swift and mostly accurate, it was my primary security unlock option. Okay, now it's time for the cameras. The S1 comes with a triple camera setup at the back. The primary is a 16 megapixel f1.8 lens, the secondary is an 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle lens, and the third is a 2 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor. And let me tell you one thing although the camera setup of the Vivo S1 looks similar to that of the Vivo Z1 Pro, it isn't. From colors to details, the S1 captures better photos. Just look at this image for comparison. The S1 is way better than the Z1 Pro. The S1 has slightly more saturation in pictures, but that looks good when compared to undersaturated images from the Z1 Pro. Onto the wide angle images, they are equally impressive. The colors look good, same as the primary lens, although if you compare the details, you will find the primary lens doing a better job. For portraits, you get two options. One is portrait lighting and the other is aperture mode. In the aperture mode, you can change the blur and focus after taking pictures, while in the portrait mode, you cannot. And talking about the portrait images, well, they look slightly saturated. The color tones in the skin look somewhat unnatural. And the edge detection is not very proper either. But the good thing is, you can choose from various different types of background blur, which is fun sometimes. Selfies too look good actually. They have a good balance of colors and maintain exposure levels very well. But I have to say again, the skin tone is not very natural. Talking of skin tones, there is AI beauty option which basically makes you look prettier. Again, comparing the selfies of the Vivo Z1 Pro and S1, it shares the same story as the rear camera. The S1 clicks pictures with richer color tone, making it look better than the Z1 Pro. There is also something called fun videos in the cameras which are basically like what we get on Instagram. But the quality is far better than on Instagram. You get a lot of filters to choose from, plus it can be fun sometimes when you are in a mood to play around. You have portrait feature for selfies as well. Like with the Z1 Pro, you get tons of options for background blurring which is a feature not so useful but still nice to have. Edge detection is a slight problem as the blur is purely software. Otherwise, it does a good enough job. Talking about the nighttime images, there is no night mode feature in here which is strange because even the Vivo Z1 Pro has one. So maybe it will arrive later with a software update. And standard nighttime images are well grainy and muddy and lack maintenance of exposure. As for videos, I was disappointed to not see a 4K option. There's only 1080p, 720p and 480p options. And its video recording capabilities are not so good, I have to say. Videos in 1080p look wobbly and they are not stabilized. 720p videos are better stabilized than the 1080p option. But overall, this is not your ideal video camera as I have found on my tests. The Vivo S1 comes with a sizable 4500mAh battery whose endurance has impressed me a lot. You can get over a day on normal usage. Plus, you can use various battery saver modes to increase endurance further. 
and as you guys know I am a pretty heavy user so if the battery lasted me for some time more than a day then a normal and moderate user can expect the battery to last even longer. And talking about charging, you get a fast charger inside the box with the Vivo S1. It's an 18 watt charger that can take your battery from 0 to 100% in around 2 hours. So what do I think about the Vivo S1? Well, before reviewing this phone, I was using the Vivo S1 Pro. And as expected, the Vivo S1 is a better phone. It comes with better features like an AMOLED display, better cameras, better design, and an in-display fingerprint scanner. So in many ways, the Vivo S1 is a slightly upgraded version of the Vivo Z1 Pro. Except for the performance, that was better on the Z1 Pro. So should you buy the Vivo S1? Well, it depends on where you live. If you live in Nepal, Bangladesh, Philippines, or Pakistan where the S1 is available, it is a good offering for some $300. However, if you are from India, you have the option to get the Realme X, which I personally think is a way better option. The only thing it misses out is on the wide angle lens which the Vivo S1 has. But apart from that, the Realme X is better in almost every aspect. So there you have it guys, our review of the Vivo S1. If you have liked this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech contents like this. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you for watching.